Okay, so we're going to uh, write down the Maxwell equations, which is really a summary of equations that we've seen so far. And we're going to start with the integral of the electric field over a closed surface. We know that that is just Gauss's law. That's equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And the reason for that is because electric fields diverge radially away or towards the source of the electric field, which is charged particles. And so there's actually a version of this. There's a mathematical theorem that will take an, this integral equation and turn it into a differential equation. So a derivative, so a kind of derivative, we won't explore this in detail in this course, we'll see this in the more advanced course, but it will be useful in getting at electromagnetic waves, and it's also very useful for getting a sense of the geometry of the electric field. So the differential version of Gauss's law for electric fields says that the electric field has a divergence, which means that in some sense it changes radially, it diverges radially away, and it depends on the charge density. So we go from charge to charge density when we go from the integral version to the differential version. And of course we know that magnetic fields don't um, diverge radially away, and that's what leads to Gauss's law for magnetism always being zero. The integral of the magnetic field over a closed surface is always zero, and the same theorem allows us to get at the differential version, which is divergence of the magnetic field, is equal to zero. It doesn't matter what the source is doing, magnetic fields don't diverge away from uh, current, they actually circle around the current. So let's look at the line integrals. So maybe we should start with magnetic fields, right? We know that magnetic fields circle around the source of magnetic fields, namely current, and so there is a useful Ampere's law, the integral of the magnetic field around a closed loop, is equal to some constant times the current enclosed, right? That's equivalent to saying that magnetic fields circle around the source of magnetic fields. And so there's a math mathematical theorem that takes this integral version and turns it into something that involves derivatives, and that expression is written as the curl of the magnetic field, which is a kind of derivative uh, around, in some sense, so the curl of B depends on the current density J, which is nothing more than the statement that magnetic fields curl around the source of the magnetic field. And there's a version of this for electric fields. When we started the course, we had electrostatics. We had that this was equal to zero, right? The, the closed loop integral of the electric field was equal to zero. But more generally, when we have time-dependent quantities, and in particular, when there's a non-zero change in the magnetic flux, we get a non-zero value to this. So electric fields may curl around the source. And of course, there's a mathematical theorem which turns this thing into something like this. But for the electric field, it says the curl of the electric field depends on, or is associated with, a changing magnetic field. And so these equations are the equations for the electric and magnetic fields, E and B, and we'll, as we go a little deeper, we'll see that they start to become more like each other in the sense that we can replace E with B and vice versa, and the equation basically looks the same. That's not quite true. At this point, there is a time-dependent magnetic field here associated with the curl of the other field, the electric field, so there should be a, an equation that, that replaces B 
here and E here, and that in fact will appear here. We'll have an additional term there, but we won't, we won't be able to change this to something that looks more like this. And so that's where we're headed.